Hello, hello, I'm Ruby Burrito, and welcome to today's video. We have a nice video today about Ascended Gear. I'm going to give a little bit of an idea of non-stat selectable real quick, but it's primarily going to be about stat selectable gear. There are trinkets, back items, weapons, and armor, and we're going to start with trinkets. So if we go to Ascended Gear at a Laurel Vendor, this is going to be my suggestion for Ascended Trinkets. If you play World v. World, do the World v. World one because it's less, uh, less Laurels. But you have Amulets, Rings, and then we come down here to whoops, the Accessories. So accessories are going to cost laurels and ectos. Now, what I will say is there is another method for getting trinkets. And that is going to be world v. world, PvP, even some PvE. You can buy them from a different vendor. For example, I'm just going to show you the... You can see this is 20 instead of 30, but you have Badges of Honor, so that's a little bit more accessible. But if we go to the Skirmish Merchant, who we will be coming back to, you can get stat selectable accessories, amulets, and rings. It does cost Skirmish Claim Tickets and Memories of Battle, but those are stat selectable. You can pick anything. Now, again, I would say go with the Laurels because they're in my opinion, cheaper and easier to get. It's just logins. And most people probably have laurels built up. And skirmish tickets can be used for a whole bunch of other things. So I wouldn't necessarily suggest those. There are some stats you can get from festivals, but fractals, PvP, World v. World, raids, Living World Season 3, Season 4, and Ice Brood Saga actually have stats that you can get or gear you can get for stat selectable trinkets as i showed you the laurel merchants are really good for semi cheap gear we can also take a look at the living world season four and living world season three gear now there's only two of the maps for living world season four that give them um you're going to be looking at sand swept isles which is right here, and Dragonfall, which is right there. Mistborn Motes and Difluorite Crystals. But if we come over to this Quartermaster, Quartermaster Hitchens, this is a back item, which we will get to, and then this is going to be an amulet right here. You can see that it is stat selectable. So those would be my suggestions. There are some achievements, but I would suggest going with the vendors because it's much easier. There are some if you want to avoid for amulets. If you want to do an achievement, I would suggest Significant Otter if you have access to Ice Brood Saga because not only do you get an Ascended Amulet that is stat selectable, but you also get the Otter's Blessing Enrichment, which both is visually cool and the 20% magic find is very nice. There's also the Legendary Trinket collections that give you Ascended and the Heart of Thorns Act 4. We come down to Heart of Thorns Act 4. Once you complete this, you get the Mordrum Loop, which is an amulet that is stat selectable. Back items. Back items are going to be pretty similar. Uh, vendors. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Pretty much all Living World Season 3 and raids. This is probably the easiest way to get a back item. This is a pretty cool one right here. I mean, you can farm up 200 of these in a week pretty easily, so... Um... There are achievements, I can show you them, but my suggestion is just buy them. 5,000 Unbound Magic and 200 of these, not too bad. If you've been farming home instances, if you play through the story, you go onto the map. I mean, you can see there's some right here. You can probably get them. I know for the Living World Season 4 currencies, I believe you can get those for Frac uh, um, Karma. I don't see them here, but there's other ways to get Jade Shards, so... Uh, keep an eye out for that and then if you do raids raids i don't they're not the hardest thing but there is a little bit of a gate to get into them they are time consuming so i'm not going to focus on those if we go to achievements heart of thorns living world season 3 path of fire and living world season 4 all have achievements that give back items for example 
I don't have the ability to look at the Lightbringers, Magisters, and Warmasters packs because I haven't finished Agent's pack. Because I need to get a couple more Leyline Crystals. But those will eventually give you an Ascended Back item. Living World Season 3, I will show you a Relic Collector. This is Siren's Landing and gives you a very cool... You get a cool little animation there. That's an Ab that's Abaddon's right there. That's a back item. And then you have the four different... We'll do Sunspear Support because that's the one that I just achieved. Raise the banner Sunspear Support. To get this one done, you need to support the Sunspears in that uh, stretch of the story. And then you can get this one. You have to do a lot of the stuff on that character, so kind of keep that in mind. And Living World Season 4 does have one on Sandswift Dials, but that one's a little bit more time-consuming. Now, you want to know my opinion for the easiest armor and weapons? I've spent a lot of time looking at this. There's two methods. The first one I'm going to show you is Strikes. Strikes, go to the Eye of the North. Strikes have, uh, they give you profit shards. If you come talk to the shard collector, let's trade some crystals. We go to Ascended Armor. Now, before you do this, make sure you know what stats you want and look and see which one gives you those stats because it is technically stat selectable, but you have to pick the right chest. Assaulter and Malicious, Power, Condi. Defenders and healers, pretty probably toughness and vitality. So, or maybe I think concentration is boon duration, things like that. So keep an eye on that. Uh, weapons, same concept, except these are all the different types of weapons. You just pick one and then you can, um, I don't think I can preview, but you get to pick whatever weapon you want. Just make sure you know what you're picking because uh, some of the ascended weapons and armor are a little... They have names, like Soja's, I believe, is Berserker. So just make sure you know what that is. Um, but that's what I would suggest for uh, armor and weapons very quickly. If you're doing daily World v. World and PvP, like I have been, you might have spare, uh, you might have spare resources. You come to the Skirmish Supervisor. I'll show you where this comes from. In World v. World, if once you complete sorry, uh, bronze, you get a Grandmaster Mark Shark. Same with silver and gold. And if you go to PvP, that resets every week, by the way. If you go to PvP, we go to All Rewards. Persimmon gives you a box of Grandmaster Marks. Amaranth does as well. And then the first completion of Byzantium. So that's per season. Now, if you come to this merchant, you can get a box of Grandmaster Marks which I did earlier today. If I use it, I can pick any of the Grandmaster marks here instead of crafting them. So if I want to get Ascended Gear, I just need to play long enough to get a bunch of marks. And eventually, you can get a full set of Ascended Gear. Or you can get Ascended Weapons. These are kind of blocked behind certain things. You have to get... Uh, you can see you must have the obsidian mace skin unlocked to purchase this item, which you'll have to buy from the obsidian weapon box. So I believe so it's a little bit harder um, to go through that method. So I would suggest strikes for armor unless you're doing raids, in which case if you want a full set of ascended armor, this achievement gives you a full set of Ascended Armor. It does take several weeks to complete. Even if you're not doing Legendary Armor for PvE, I would try to complete this because it is it is all six pieces. I don't know if it gives you a, the Aquatic Headgear, but it should for sure give you these. No, it does not look like it gives you the Underwater ascended item but it'll give you six pieces which is very helpful uh, that's actually going to wrap it up um to summarize trinkets if you 
I don't really personally see the point of uh, stat selectable trinkets because once you select it, you can't really change it. I would go with the Laurel Merchant because it's the cheapest. Otherwise, you can go to any of the vendors. For back items, I would suggest Living World Season 3 currencies or some of the achievements if you don't feel like farming for currencies, which I totally understand. Once you get a Sky Skill, you might get tired of uh, farming for those. And then for armor and weapons, Strikes is probably the fastest and the most consistent because you know what you're getting. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, if I missed something, please let me know down in the comments below. I haven't been working on Ascended Gear. I'm skipping straight to Legendary for everything. I already crafted all the Gen 1 Legendary weapons, and I'm currently working on the three different types. So I'm doing armor. For armor, I'm doing uh, heavy, medium, and light. I'm doing PvE, PvP, and Worldly World for those. And then eventually, once I'm done with that, I will do all of the trinkets and uh, a back item. Probably all three back items as well. So uh, I'm not the most knowledgeable, but this should be a pretty good guide to getting ascended gear. Uh, there might be some tip, tricks of the trade that I, I may have missed, so please let me know down in the comments. Uh, if you want to support the channel, please uh, feel free to subscribe. That would be much appreciated. And we'll see you in the next one.